Hey, it's Blind Barrel Review time. Woo! This is going to be the December bear, uh, box because March is getting ready to hit our doorsteps. So if you've got this box and you've already cracked and tasted it, Check out the video and see how, what my thoughts are on the four bottles for December. If you haven't cracked yours yet and you want to taste along, that'd be awesome. If you haven't cracked yours yet and you don't want any spoilers, I guess crack it, drink it, come back and watch this after. Thanks, guys. Now is the time sprockets when we dance. Hey everybody, welcome back to Drams for Dummies. Uh, let me get that down a little bit, a little SNL throwback, a little uh, Mike Myers sprocket action. That's what I felt like when I put this on. So, super exciting day. Blind Barrels, um, you've all, if you're seeing this, you've probably seen my interview with Bobby DeMars De 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 uh, from uh, the owner of Blind Barrels. Super awesome guy, super great interview. The company is just doing things right, and I don't want to take a ton of time and sidebar on a lot of things, but first of all, the packaging of this box has got like a little magnetic clothes on it. The suit, I'm a, I'm a monkey, primate, ape fan, so I love the, the chimp. Um, this one, just real quick, I'll just read. You've got, again, the tasting notes kind of back here. Um, the chart to kind of help you with tasting notes and again I'm a dummy so I don't use that and also I can't pull notes if I use this I could probably pull out some interesting things also got the QR code that we're gonna scan there at the end uh, that tells us what the heck we're drinking so these are completely blind again for a recap every quarter 60 ish 70 ish I still need to look it up I'll put it down here in a graphic um, the, the link to blind barrels will be in the comments um, uh, but they send every quarter four blind samples that, that, and you get to do a blind like this and kind of figure out and everything that they're doing and they're trying to highlight and, and, and get people's attention on awesome uh, craft distilleries and regional distilleries that are doing really great things around the country. Uh, we know the big ones. We kind of know those flavor profiles. We know the prices we're having to pay for that stuff now, if you can find it, whatever, when you can find it. So this stuff is great way to help these distilleries get their name out. Matter of fact, you know how much I love Holiday and how much um, you know they're going to be an official sponsor someday. Bobby and his company are trying to highlight these great smaller distilleries like a Holiday. And I think maybe I've helped connect their, the dots there and there might be some Holiday uh, action in one of these blind barrels coming up, but not for a little while because they give a little little uh, They name their boxes and this one is planes trains and automobiles, which is awesome Aaron and I took a planes trains and automobiles vacation in June did Amtrak did flights did driving hit like five different cities and you know It was it was amazing um, Hit me up in the comments if you've also done the trains the trains are just this is the way to go for so many reasons if you're not in a hurry um, but this one, they drove around the country. They hit 13 different distilleries, over 1,700 miles, over five states. And they, through those, that journey and hitting those distilleries, they found like all this cool stuff to kind of load up their next couple of boxes. And so these four for sure have come from that. And the, the card, the leather letter that comes with the box kind of talks about some just little bit of features of, of some of what's happening not enough for you to know what's happening in here i know one is like some kind of combination of 30 different finishes or some ridiculous thing so again i don't know by color you would kind of say it's one of these two buggers this dude is super light i don't know what's happening there so yeah we don't know what we're going to get in these and that is the fun so i'm going to do this with you um we'll talk more I'll do the the tasting, the talking. If you saw my first box, my first episode, I have no idea if this is even in the screen. I should put it back here with me. I'm watching Spotify. By the way, the music today, I was listening to some Spotify and uh, realized that Arrested Development has a brand new album. What? Amazing group, as you know, from the 90s and maybe the early 2000s, but their, high, their high, height was the 90s and the early 90s. 
and uh, I was excited. So I gave this a listen earlier, and it's good stuff. So haven't had this this kind of jam going in the in the background. So I'm going to let this thing roll and hope that YouTube doesn't catch it. So without further ado, let's get into this thing. Um, let me make a little bit more space because I'm clumsy. Let's start with this ridiculously. <laughs> You can't probably see it very well. Maybe you can. I don't even know how to describe this color. It looks like... it. I've done some... I'm the geek that does some of the barrel aging stuff. I've done that before. And taken the, the, the Buffalo Trace... Um, um, uh, can't think of it what they call that now. Raw dog or whatever? <laughs> That's not it. Dang it comments what is it dang it anyway but you know just the, the the straight distillate and then age it in your own barrels this looks like what that looked like maybe after i don't know the equivalent of six months in in that little barrel this looks like a, a tiny amount of age or maybe it's some kind of i don't think i think everything they're doing it's all american right it's all from so i don't know what this is but we'll see let me, let me give it a nose here I don't think I finished that combination. It's all my first blind barrels. There was one in there that did not get a lot of love from me, and I and I feel bad to this day about it. But uh, the fun is again, even when you get things that don't hit your palate, you're getting different things. It's not it's not just the same five distilleries and or the MGP that everyone knows. You're going to get something new, and sometimes that takes some adjusting, and sometimes it's just. It just doesn't hit you the right way, but that's a lot of fun. So that's that's the great thing. There's so many great reasons why you all should be subscribing to this service if you're into this kind of stuff at all and want to discover new and support local. And also, going to keep talking, keep promoting, um, the bottles that they, that they the, the samples they send, they sell full bottles in their shop. And, and, and they don't mark them up. They're just trying to get, again, help the distillery get their product out. So, you know, it's always a hope that I'm going to have some freaking ridiculous thing I've never tried before. And then I get to just go, after I shut the camera off, maybe jump on blind barrels and buy a bottle for myself. So, that's really unique. That's, <laughs> I could go scotch, because if you look at that color. But it's not scotch, but it could be a single malt kind of maybe deal. And I don't know all the rules on the on the single malts and the scotches. I, I'm just not, that's not my jam. So I don't know minimum ages. I don't know type of barrels that are required or not required. I should, I should learn. This has got kind of a grapey, fruity quality. And you'll have the I'll show you the bottle as you're watching this so you know what I'm drinking here at least you can see something you can see what I'm drinking I have no idea my wife cooked earlier I should have I don't time these out very well I'm getting some of her dinner in here it's so light and so kind of youthful um, that it's it's like letting other things in the glass but yeah I I don't want, I'm pulling a note that I don't know if it's coming from her <laughs> dinner or if it's coming from this, but there's this grapey, but there's kind of a savory thing going on. It definitely smells young. Let me see how, how it goes on the palate here. Man, I'm, I'm going to be so surprised if this thing is over two years old. Um, or, But again, I don't know what they're maybe doing in states. It can't, it's not scotch. It would be a single malt. And are they, are, they aging, are, they, are they aging it at all? Are they aging it in steel? Like, I don't even know. Like, I don't know what weird thing is happening in here. But it tastes very... Um, Thin and young and kind of like that's a little bit of that I don't love scotch it's got a scotchiness to it so I'm gonna guess I'm just gonna say single malt I don't have a lot of experience with that yet so this would be fun like a youthful young single malt I don't know the nose is nice um, but it's not great it's 
Again, I don't know if I'm pulling Aaron's food. Gosh darn it, she made some really good smelling stuff, but it's kind of getting in the glass. But it does kind of have that watery, thin, young, scotchy thing in the nose that I don't love. But it does have some grapes and some and some kind of um, um, fruit, and it, it's got it's got some interest in there. But I don't love it. I'm gonna give that a six point five. And if you watched, if you've watched to now. That's that's not bad. That's not a bad nose, but for me, I'm just always I just love I'm a nose guy. So I love I just kind of default to giving high scores for noses and that might be one of the lowest I've given, but it's not terrible. It's good, but I think it's going to be low proof. It's got to be low proof. 80 I don't know. 80 proof, really young, thin not a ton of flavor going on. Unique uh, for single malt scotch type people. I can see them really liking this, especially coming out of America. That 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 could trip some triggers for some people for sure. Um, again, unique, different. Um, I don't love it for a lot of reasons. I like depth. I like I like deep and rich and and layers. And this doesn't. This is thin and light and kind of refreshing, and watery. Um, kind of grainy a little bit I don't know um, I want to leave a little bit in there but six on the palette five on the finish I'm just I'm trying to also get meaner with my scores so that's part of that um, What I like about this, now this one does belies what I was going to say, but start with the light, start with the young, start with the lowest proof, and then kind of hopefully work us up. These guys are, are brilliant at what they do, so I'm sure they have a journey they want to take us on. I like that. for That, that was kind of an interesting um, uh, palette waker-upper, I guess. So this guy is a dark booger. So let's see what this dark fun guy is doing. <laughs> Mmm, that's a lot different. That's good. It, and again, I think because it's not the big boys that we know, you get kind of used to those notes and you can pull them. I can't because I'm terrible, but you can kind of pull things out quicker. And then with these, with these different crafts, distillers that are doing some, some interesting things, I can't pull everything. I, I can't pull anything because it's like I'm getting unique stuff I've never smelled before. And this is another one. That's good. There is something. <laughs> Holy cow. I almost want to think this might be the finished one because it's like it kind of smells rich and fairly traditional. And then at the end of the of the of the of the of the smell is some kind of a it's like it's not a sour, like high pitch sort of sharp um, smell. It's kind of a it's another deep smell, but it's different that I've never smelled before. There is crazy different layers in here. That I don't know, and again, it might be my wife's food. Why do I shoot things when it's not ideal? Because I just love getting stuff shot and sharing it with you guys. I'm kind of like riding the high of the new channel, you know? I'm just like, just keep shooting. Man. What in the world? What is that? Holy cow. I'm terrible. I can't tell you. I can't share this with you. But it has... Ooh, what is that? Like Cracker Jacks? You know Cracker Jacks. That It's really unique flavor. It's kind of that burned caramel, molasses, popcorn... In the finish, I'm really getting a lot of that Cracker Jack, that corniness. But there's something else in there. There's a sa there's an even more savory note, almost like getting in close to touching on that barbecue kind of uh, savoriness. This is really neat. 
this is one again that I might not just think. I don't think when I smell it, this is my jam, because it's the first time I've ever smelled this before, and so, something like this. It's it's got notes in here I don't recognize or understand. There's a little sweet, um, a fruity sweet kind of. Um, Hmm. Is that banana? What is up there? There's a little, uh, there's a little something, something. I almost want to say banana, kind of up around the top, almost like a top layer of some fruit, but and and, and it could be in that banana world. It's the white fruits. It's the apples. It's the bananas. It's those guys. But then there's like this more depth in there. So again, what is, is this a finished product? I mean, that's kind of what I'm thinking. This might be my a finished guy. Just because it because you kind of starts with one thing and then it sort of has like different finish and different kicks on, on the end that have a different smell. This is really good. Really different. Kind of sulfury, which is not great. But it, but yet it works for this one. I don't know why this is working for me because it's I, I, I I'm just being open minded. I think like it's doing different weird things, and I'm enjoying the different the ride it's giving me. I like the ride, you know. Um, but it's got a little sulfur, um, that burnt match thing going on, and then the back, that finish, the flavor and the finish just keeps running in there. Um, for uniqueness, I, I, I'm going to go 7.5. I like that. And I'm, I'm, I'm going to come back. I'm leaving a little bit in the glass. I'm going to go 7.5 in the palette and 8 in the finish because that finish just kind of it just kind of kept running. It didn't like sizzle and like have a ton of like craziness in it. But that palette has that kind of sulfur and it's a little heavy. And then the finish just switches gears into something completely different, and that's fun. Like so, this one to me is so far um, really neat because it's got different things going on the nose. It's got then maybe a different thing from that going on the palate, and then a different thing from that going on the finish. So it's not coherent necessarily as far as like it's not like you, you, this note in the nose carries through the palate, but it. It is coherent in the sense that it works together. And when you think about the science of making this crap, right, distilling grains, locally, local grains usually these guys do, so different types of grains, um, you know, the, what yeast did they use? What barrels do they have? You know, where are they? What's their terroir? What's their, what's their, their um, climate like? And then you don't know when you put it in the barrel what's going to come out the other side. So when I say that... It's different, got a different nose and a palate than a finish, but it's coherent. That's not like some guy in a lab like blending these experiences. That's just science and Mother Nature coming together and going, well, that works this time. And also having good master blenders and, and distillers who can pull these things out at the right time and go, that's the time to barrel that bottle, you know, bottle that barrel, you know. So this dude's a dark booger too. So let's see what this is going to do for us. But that was good. I, I, that was interesting. Wow. <clears throat> Syrupy, kind of medicinal cherry, but um, like that cough syrupy thing's in there. But it's it, kind of like this one. It's like it's not off-putting. It's working. Yeah, rich, rich cherry compote. Um, Rich, dark fruit, compote, syrupy, sugary. That is really, really good. Now I feel like this might be the finished one because there's so much layer in there. And there's so much depth and there's so much like different flavors happening. You could just, I just got a little bit of a Play-Doh. <laughs> Never pulled that nose before. But it didn't, again, didn't hurt me. It wasn't like, oh, gross, Play-Doh. It was just a little bit of that, you've walked into an art, uh, an art room, you know, an art classroom. You get a little bit of those different um, paints and, and Play-Dohs and clays and yeah, a little of that. You're, you're alone for this dummy ride. I'm, I'm sorry, I can't pull the good stuff. It's just what you get. This is just, but it's rich and it's, and it's thick and it smells viscous and it smells aged, but I don't know. I didn't guess proof on that guy. Ooh. Mm, not high proof, um, 100 or less, 
for sure. Um, so like this is like 80 and that's like maybe 90. I don't know. And as far as age, when you start talking about finishes, I, it's hard to say. But it, it drank smooth and it and it did not kick like a really – I didn't get a lot of youth note on it. So it's got a, it's got a handful of years in it. This thing has got to be finished, and this thing is decadent, rich, and, and just syrupy. I almost feel like when you were a kid, and maybe, you, well, not a kid, hell, you, a lot of you might be doing this now. There's a Perkins across the street from us. Think, I don't know if you know Perkins, think IHOP. Let's go IHOP. That's probably a better one to talk about anyway. But you go and get the pancakes. They bring out, like, the, the three syrups, and it's, like, maple I don't even know what they are now. Like, is it like orange something marmalade thing? And then like a blueberry comp, I mean, what are these sweet, sweet syrups, you know? I feel like you're kind of getting all of that in one glass. Mmm. Mmm. Wow. God dang blind, blind barrels, you, you, you little, you MFers, you're good at what you do. You've really worked things up here. That's a full flavored booger. That's a full finished booger. That's got a sizzle in there that makes me feel like it's got a lot of rye happening in here. So maybe it's a high rye blend that then has been finished. This might be that 30 finished thing where it's just... You don't even know what's going on this in this glass. There's just a lot of things happening in this glass. This is this is this is tripping. This is tripping the triggers. This is this is this is um, this is tickling all the right things in all the right places. If you know what I mean. Wink. This is really good. This makes me feel like I'm feeling like right now. I'm like I don't know what this is going to end up being, but I might be buying a bottle of this one. Maybe this one too. That's so good. It nose is different every time. You know I love that. You just want to stick my face in this glass. I feel like our proof's gone up too. We might be at more like 100 here. Really good. The finish has a moment of like, it's going to get, I don't know if it's going to be crafty or youthy or just a little bit harsh and ethanol-y. Where you're like, ooh, it's, but then it kind of comes, it's like it sort of, it starts great, then it kind of gets a little bit like something's going to, something's it's going to go sideways on us. You know, shout out to Matt Porter, he'll talk about the ride and the drive, and it's like this one, it's like, it's like, it accelerates to that finish, you're like, yeah, and then it, like, it's like the weather's been around here where it's zero or minus degrees uh, in Kansas City, and they get that patch of ice where you like start to shimmy, you're like, oh shit, we're, we're losing control, <laughs> And then you, you, you're a good driver, so you get it back on track, and you, you level, and then it's like, yeah, and then after that slip, your heart's going, and you feel like you're a little bit unnerved, but you have a fun moment afterwards. It's like, yay, oh shit, yay, in the finish. This thing is a lot of fun, man. I'm supposed to give scores. I haven't done any scoring. I mean, I'm going to go 8.5. I'm going to go, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to like leave some for the finish here. I'm going to go... Eight and eight. Those are good. That's 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 really good. Man, good job, Blind Barrels. And just no matter what, I'm having fun. And I would do it by myself. But now that I have this channel and I have you watching, I'm having fun with you. Like, we're just, I'm, we're just exploring, exploring new things. What are you drinking right now? Right now, throw a comment down. As I'm watching you, I'm drinking, I don't know, I often watch... My favorite uh, whiskey tubers in the morning when I'm having breakfast, I'm not drinking anything. And if I was, I might have a problem. But So maybe you're not drinking, but do you know any of these things? <laughs> do you know any of these things that I'm drinking? Have you? Are you from the area that they're from? Uh, do you have a relationship? Like, I've got my relationship with Holiday that I'm loving, and I'm going to keep working on that. The great thing about these is... You might be from the state, and you might have been to the distillery. You might know the, 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 the people involved with it. You might have a personal connection, or maybe you just happen to buy a bottle at your local store. Like, tell me about what you think about what I'm drinking. I don't know what I'm drinking, so you can't offend or um, sway me at all. I'm just, I'm in the middle of this, so. But this one had a weird hit. 
<laughs> also, my olfactories are getting weird. That again, it, God bless blind barrels. Like, please, if you're a bourbon person, subscribe to these guys. Like, they're introducing you to things you've never tasted before and never smelled before. Like, I don't even know how to describe this. Go figure. Because <laughs> I'm an idiot, but I'm a dummy, sorry. Um, there's traditional in there, but it's, it's, it is like, it, it's the foundation is the traditional. And there's like, so we kind of want to feel like it's rye here. Because when people talk about pine or dill, all those kind of, of interesting, um, spicy, punchy, fragrant notes are in here it's like I, I kind of mentioned the play-doh on this one and i kind of feel like i'm back into that again i feel like i'm back into like this sort of earthy art supply uh woods but but also like I don't just those 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 like very organic materials those very earthy materials this is really fun and different and rich and layered and spicy. I'm going back to my 8.5. So far we had a 6.5, a 7.5, an 8.5, and an 8.5 on the nose. What are we doing on the palate? That's a spicy MFR. <laughs> Still going got into the to the mouth sat there i rolled around a little bit and it was just like it was lighting up shit in the mouth which is fun we, this one is the one of the of the four of these is the bull this is the bull this is the higher proof probably this is the higher rye probably this is the one that you got to smell it the right way drink it the right way swallow it the right way to to make sure you get the right experience good job Love this. What is this? This one brought more kind of, this was different every single time I smelled it and drank it and it would be different at different moments. This one's a little, this one stays fairly consistent. This is a winter bourbon, man. This is a, this is like, um, it was like a, high west midwinter nice dram it's just like sit around a fire with this rich spicy war it warms you while you're smelling it it warms you when you drink it i'm going to keep 8.5 on the nose let's see what the second sip does all right so the proof either the rye is out of control and that's bringing all that spice and kick and or it's a combination of rye and, and proof. Let's go 110 on the proof. Um, it, it might be higher than that. 115, 120. Between 110 and 120, I'll hedge. Um, it really sizzles and, and it, it's got a lot of spi pepper spice in the palate. Um, so I still feel like it's got to be a high rye. I don't feel like this is finished. This feels like it just might be a, a little bit older. Um, proofier high rye bastard i don't know um it's good it's a little one note i like the experience i like the warming i like the sizzle the finish runs on forever <laughs> again it doesn't do any twists and turns in the finish it just stays pretty much in that pocket but i'm i, I give it credit for staying in the pocket like it's like it's kind of telling you what it is from start to finish and it sort of del and it delivers at a fairly high level um, I'm going to go uh, at the moment 7.5 on the palette and 8 on the finish which I think would make this and the one before top shelfers let's get a drink of water this is where maybe heavy editing comes in because I like these I like the scores I think I'm pretty comfortable with it but I have more in the glass so let's just go back through real fast not look at my book, not look at what I scored before. 
and just see, we're gonna go in reverse order and just see where I end up. This thing probably gets annihilated based on the proof and the sizzle of these three, but let's just see. Okay. See, and I always come down. I never go, I don't think I ever go up on the second pass. That's really good. I was gonna ding it down to eight. I'm just gonna like, I'm gonna leave it alone. That's really good. I'm gonna actually, I am gonna, I'm gonna, I'm in my own head. I'm gonna bring that up to an eight. I'm gonna leave the finish as an eight, which means this is exactly what this one was. 8.5, eight and eight. That seems unrealistic. Something's gonna move here. Someone's gonna, someone's gonna, one of these is gonna move because they're gonna, off each other, gonna move each other. I'm moving this one up. I'm gonna give this one a bump to nine. That's crazy. I went really close to this one. I'm gonna let it keep its eight. But I think because I, I butted it so close to that one, the finish didn't win for me. And because I gave it a 0.5 on the nose, I'm gonna feel okay taking this finish down to a 7.5. I don't know. Vegetal, quirky, fun, good, but weird. I could give it an eight just to be nice. I did a 7.5 before. It's different. I'm gonna say 7.5 because Oh, we, uh, so quirky. There is a note in there that a pro could pull. It just keeps sitting there. It's like taunting me. It's like, name what this is. It's different. I like it. The finish does run this. I'm gonna, I'm gonna keep my scores the exact same. 7.5, 7.5, 8. It's not a top shelf, but that is fun and different. All right, young, thin, scotchy bastard, what are you doing here? Oh my God, the scotch, the scotch on this. This is just scotch. If I didn't know that they got this from a five state region, I would say this is scotch, this is just a scotch. This got, this was like, this could be a 10 to, a thousand year old, but it sat on the on the shores of Scotland in a whatever barrel and very. So I'm gonna. So I'm gonna. Okay. So it's a five state. I'm gonna go northern state. I'm gonna say Michigan or Wisconsin or North Dakota, something where the the climate doesn't get too. Cr I mean, it gets cold, where everything kind of stops moving. And then in the summer, it's like 70s or 80s, so it, it moves a little bit, and they didn't do it for very long, so that's what I'm going to say. I don't... No. I'm moving, this, I'm moving you down, my friend. I'm going to let you stay... I'm, I, I moved the, net, the nose down to 6, the palate to 6, stayed at 6, finished at 5. I'm going to let that sit where it is. So let's figure out what the hell we're dealing with here. Let us, let us get the reveal figured out. Boop. Here we go. All right. Sample A. I gave it a 5.7. This dude, I'm going to try to be quick. Cedar Ridge from, I oh, God. Damn it, Iowa. I didn't give you any love in the last video. I am so sorry. Iowa, gosh darn it. This is Cedar Ridge Distillery. This is the quintessential American single malt. Oh, hey, I don't have any experience with scotch or single malts, but I did say that must be what we're doing. This whiskey is a Solera blend. It draws from a range of almost 40 types of finishing casks. Many of them uh, from Cedar Ridge Winery that is right on site. It's a 92 proof, I think I said 80, it's, it is low proof. Blend of five to eight year old whiskeys, I did not call that correctly. I don't know how we got there. Mash bill, 100%, two row, pale malted barley. 
This looked like a two-year-old finish. I questioned how it was finished or where they aged these things. Um, 40 types of finishing casks. Unbelievable. Let me see if I can scroll fast. And I don't want to read all this right now because I did that last time and I got caught in this crazy read, read, read moment. Join, please subscribe to Blind Barrels and then you get all the cards and you get all the access and the information. Um, I think I just messed myself up. I lost where I am. Let's get back. So this one is a single malt whiskey. I don't love scotches and single malts, so I think that's where it lost me a little bit. Let me keep going here real quick. This one got a 7.7. .7. It is from M.B. Rolland Distillery in Pembroke, Kentucky. This is a Kentucky Straight Rye Whiskey Batch 16. I don't know if I pulled all that rye. Um, bottles are whiskey at still in barrel strength. This means that unlike most distilleries, they don't add water to their distillate when they are putting it into the barrels to age or even when they are bottling it. This is 107 proof. I think I said this was like a 90 or 100. Came up. It is a minimum age statement of two years. It's a 68% rye, 27% corn, 5% malted barley. This is crazy. So this is a full rye whiskey. Um, very young rye whiskey. Uh, I, I said 7.5 on the nose, 7.5 on the palate, 8 on the finish. I liked it a lot. This is really interesting. Um, I'm not going to give you all the, the, the breakdowns because, again, I know I'm, I'm, on, I'm long on time. But good on you guys. Good on you, Blind Barrels, and good on you, uh, MB Rollin Distillery, uh, for making some really interesting, unique stuff and giving us some proof. I like that. I, it, it came off way smoother than that. Um, so I did not think that that was a high proof booger, but good job. All right, sample C that I liked a lot. It gave me, I'm getting warm under the sweater with all this fun booze and this fun talking. This was, I gave this an end of a nine nose, eight palette, 7.5 finish. This is Casey Jones Distillery in Hopkinsville, Kentucky. Um, this is a Casey Jones Single Barrel Kentucky Straight Bourbon Whiskey Mash Bill 1. So 111.5 proof. It's a three-year-old. It's a mash bill of 96% corn, 3% rye, 1% malted barley. I don't know what I said when I was drinking it. I think that I thought this was the crazy finish one. This was so good. What, what does this tell you guys, if you're watching? Um, three-year-old plus, it's a, it's a three-year-old age statement, 96% um, corn, and this came off so unique, so different, so fun, that I gave it a 9 on the nose and an 8 on the palate and a 7.5. This is a top shelfer. This is not an old. This is not a, a legacy distillery. This is just people doing things in a unique and fun and right way. God bless you guys, Casey Jones. I'm excited to buy this bottle and have this on my shelf. Let's see the last sample so I can get out of here and get some dinner. My body is telling me it is time to eat. This one was unique. 8.5 on the nose, 8 on the palate, 8 on the finish. Also, top shelfer. Ah, Nash. Here we go. Here comes a big boy who I've not tried before, but I'm excited to try. Uh, Nashville Barrel Company, cask strength, small batch, straight bourbon whiskey. Um, this is 115 proof. This is aged, this is a six year age, 78% corn, 12% rye, 10% malted barley. Um, so good. So, so good. I'm going to read all those notes later because I know that I felt like I was drinking some very unique things and I think that we've proved that I was drinking some very unique things. This one, the last one, might be the least unique, but I want to go back. It's got a lot of, it's a high corn mash bill. Um, I want to go back and read what the heck's going on with that. Guys, 
Thank you for joining me on this adventure. I've had a lot of fun. I got a nice buzz. I am starving and can't wait to put a lot of unhealthy food in my belly. If you are not a, a, a subscriber to Blind Barrels, you are missing out. That you are telling me that you don't want to try new things. You don't want to experience and support what these awesome um, local and, and, and regional distillers are doing that they are putting their heart and soul into. So you should be doing this because this is a blast. I shared it with you guys, but this was fun. Smelling things you never smelled before. Tasting things you never tasted before. Get on board with Blind Barrels. I'm going to go after I eat because I have to eat first. I'm going to jump on their site, see which of these barrels are available because at least these two probably need to be on my shelf and I want to give my money to those distillers and support what they're doing. Thank you guys for supporting me. If you haven't already, please subscribe. Please put a comment down here on how you're liking all of this stuff or anything else you're thinking when you're watching this. And if you're so inclined, hit the link in my description. Uh, and be a patron because we're going to do some really awesome things, patrons. We are going to do some great uh, barrel picks. We're going to do some great fundraisers. We are going to do some great things that, that bring a community together around whiskey. And I want you to be a part of that. So thank you guys. Love you. Till next time.